Hello, my name is Ross Firestone, and I'm a fellow in medical oncology and hematology at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, um, and my research is focused on multiple myeloma. The therapy for multiple myeloma has changed dramatically over the last few years with the advent of new immune therapies that have become available, with a lot of these immune therapies targeting something on multiple myeloma cells called BCMA. Uh, this includes drugs like belantamab mavodotin, which is an antibody drug conjugate, CAR T-cell therapies, and bispecific antibodies. The abstract that I'm presenting at the conference this year uh, involves a drug called teclistamab, which received FDA approval for the treatment of relapsed refractory multiple myeloma at the end of 2022. Uh, this approval was based off the results of a clinical trial where the patients that were recruited were generally young and had never been exposed to a drug targeting BCMA, that target, in the past. Um, so what we did is we looked at sort of the first few patients treated at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, a little over 40 patients that received this drug teclistamab to see, one, if the drug sort of retained its efficacy outside of a clinical trial setting where the patients are typically older and maybe have more comorbidities than patients who would be included in a standard clinical trial, but more importantly, looking at patients who have been exposed to other agents targeting that BCMA target in the past. Um, the data we collected show that patients who've been exposed to those types of therapies in the past really have the potential to do just as well as the patients who've never seen those types of therapies before. So teclistamab can really remain a very appropriate therapy option for patients, even if they've been exposed to CAR T-cell therapy or belantamab mafodone in the past. Um, we also looked at some of the complications of therapy. A lot of patients worry about cytokine release syndrome as a side effect of teclistamab, um, but we actually found with looking at this patient population that the patients who experienced cytokine release syndrome were much more likely to actually respond to the therapy, meaning that it's perhaps more of an endorsement than an indictment of teclistamab. All the patients who experienced cytokine release syndrome generally had pretty mild symptoms, and there were very rare instances in which the side effects were more severe or potentially life-threatening. Cytokine release syndrome typically manifests as a potentially low-grade or higher-grade fever, um, as patients are usually first receiving the drug while they're in the hospital. Most patients are able to get through it just with supportive care alone, Tylenol to manage the fever. In some cases, a more powerful immune suppressant is given, but the side effects are generally very mild, and the symptoms resolve usually within a week of their first dose of the drug.